Stretching across 350 kilometres of Western Australia's remote outback, the Devonian Great Barrier Reef stands as a fossilised relic of one of Earth's most extensive and diverse ancient ecosystems. Approximately 375 million years ago, this area was a warm tropical coastline, home to a sprawling reef system that rivaled today's Great Barrier Reef in size, complexity and ecological importance. Preserved as rugged limestone ranges, this ancient reef offers profound insights into the evolution of marine ecosystems, the intricate interplay between life and geology, and the environmental changes that ultimately led to its demise. Now there is a fantastic website that explains much of what is mentioned in this video. I'll include a link to it in the description. The Devonian period is known as the Age of Fishes, due to the remarkable diversity and evolutionary advancements of fish during this period. The Devonian Great Barrier Reef was born during the Middle Devonian period, around 385 million years ago, in a time of high global sea levels. Situated near the equator at the time, northern Western Australia's warm shallow seas provided the perfect environment for reef development. Tectonic forces shaped the Fitzroy Trough, a fault-bounded depression that opened into the Paleotethys Ocean. This basin became the foundation of the Leonard Shelf, a carbonate platform that served as the structural and ecological base for the reef's growth. Unlike modern coral-dominated reefs, Devonian reefs were built by calcareous sponges, calcified microbial mats, and calcareous algae. Tabulate and rugose corals also contributed, particularly in the early phases. Tabulate corals are extinct colonial corals with horizontal internal plates common in Paleozoic reefs. Rugose corals are extinct solitary or colonial corals with a horn-shaped skeleton and were major reef builders in the Paleozoic. Over millions of years, these reef builders formed platforms rising hundreds of metres above the seafloor, creating an ecosystem of immense scale. This ancient reef system was not just a singular entity, but a dynamic network of environments. In the back reef platform, protected lagoons flourished behind the reef crest. These lagoons, nutrient-rich and shielded from open ocean waves, were home to diverse communities of stromatoporoid colonies, microbial mounds and oolitic limestones. To explain, stromatoporoid colonies are fossilised marine sponges that formed layered calcareous skeletons, contributing to reef structures. Microbial mounds are sedimentary structures built by communities of microorganisms like cyanobacteria, trapping and binding sediments and oolitic limestones are sedimentary rocks composed mainly of ooids, small spherical grains formed by the concentric precipitation of calcium carbonate around a nucleus, typically in warm shallow marine waters. This nucleus can be a sand grain, a shell fragment, or a tiny piece of organic material. The reef margin or crest mark the high energy zone where stromatoporoids and calcareous algae built wave resistant structures. These reefs acted as barriers, protecting the back reef zones while also serving as the structural backbone of the ecosystem. Beyond the crest lay the full reef slope, where debris from collapsing reef sections accumulated. This zone was characterised by tailless deposits, turbidic sediments and large rock fragments transported downslope. Tailless deposits are accumulations of broken rock fragments at the base of steep slopes or cliffs, formed by weathering and gravity driven processes and turbidites are underwater landslides that deposit turbidic sediments. Further offshore, the basin collected fine sediments and preserved fossils, showcasing the interactions between the reef and the surrounding marine environment. As always, we need to look at the geology of the region, which ties directly into the formation of the reef. The development of the Devonian Great Barrier Reef was closely tied to tectonic processes in the Canning Basin. During the middle to late Devonian, the Leonard Shelf, located along the basin's northern margin, experienced significant crustal extension. Crustal extension is the stretching and thinning of the Earth's crust due to tectonic forces, often forming rift valleys and basins. Faulting created accommodation space, enabling the reef system to grow vertically and laterally over millions of years. These tectonic processes were instrumental in shaping the reef's architecture. Active faulting along the Fitzroy Trough influenced sedimentation patterns and allowed for the formation of steep reef margins. Marginal slopes where talus and debris accumulated reflect the dynamic interactions between tectonics and reef building processes. Faulting not only shaped the reef's overall structure, but also caused localised collapses along the reef margin. These collapses resulted in massive debris flows, 
which contributed to the formation of breccias and turbidic deposits in four reef environments. Breccia is a coarse grained rock composed of angular fragments cemented together, formed from the collapse or fracturing of rocks. Early fractures, possibly triggered by earthquakes, led to the formation of Neptunian dikes. Neptunian dikes are vertical fractures in rocks often filled with sediment or minerals, often formed underwater. These features are common along the reef margins and prove the interplay between tectonics and sedimentation in creating complex depositional systems. The Devonian Great Barrier Reef supported a thriving ecosystem that mirrored the complexity of modern coral reefs. Stromatoporoids were the dominant reef builders, their massive calcareous frameworks stabilizing the structure. These sponges, some of which grew up to 5 meters in diameter, displayed remarkable longevity and regenerative abilities, with lifespans extending up to 500 years. Microbial communities also played a critical role in reef development. Forming structures called microbialites, these organisms created calcified mats, mounds and domes that acted as sediment traps and contributed to the reef's growth. Similar to the stromatolites found today in Shark Bay, these microbialites were vital to the reef's stability and productivity. In addition to stromatoporoids and microbialites, tabulate and rugose corals added to the reef's diversity, especially during its early stages. Over time, these organisms declined, and by the late Devonian, microbialites and algae had become the primary reef builders. The reef was also home to a variety of marine animals. Placoderms, armoured fish with bony plates, were the apex predators of the Devonian seas, preying on smaller fish and invertebrates. Other marine life included sharks, lungfish, ammonoids and brachiopods. Fossils of these creatures, preserved in the Gogo Formation, provide extraordinary insights into the biodiversity of the Devonian seas. The exceptional preservation of these fossils, including soft tissues and reproductive organs, makes the Gogo Formation one of the world's most important paleontological sites. Over its 23 million year history, the Devonian reef system underwent significant changes, adapting to environmental and tectonic shifts. During its initial growth phase, the reef thrived in response to global sea level rise. Tectonic subsidence created new accommodation space, allowing the reef to grow vertically and expand laterally. Tectonic subsidence is the sinking of the Earth's crust due to tectonic forces. However, the reef's ability was periodically disrupted by short-term drownings caused by rapid sea level rises. Despite these disturbances, the reef demonstrated remarkable resilience, recovering and resuming growth after each event. Around 372 million years ago, the Frasnian Fermenian extinction event triggered a dramatic decline in stromatoporoids and other primary reef building organisms. This event is one of the largest mass extinctions in Earth's history and coincided with global glaciation and other environmental stresses. This global crisis caused significant environmental shifts, including widespread cooling and reduced oxygen levels in marine environments, forcing the reef to adapt. The extinction's impact is vividly preserved in the fossil record of the Devonian Reef as assemblages shifted from diverse stromatoporoid-dominated ecosystems to microbialite-rich structures. These changes reflect the reef's struggle to adapt to increasingly challenging conditions, marking a turning point in its long history of resilience. The final collapse of the reef system occurred during a period of sharp sea level regression linked to the ice age that the Earth had undergone during this time. Sea level regression exceeded 80 metres between 365 and 363 million years ago, exposing much of the reef to erosion and environmental stress. This regression, coupled with a broader cooling trend as Gondwana drifted southward, reduced the tropical habitats necessary for reef survival. When sea levels finally rose again, the reef was buried under sediments, marking the end of its existence as a living system, its vibrant life replaced by a fossilised legacy. The reef system underwent significant compaction and diagenesis, processes that left a lasting mark on its geological structure. Diagenesis involves chemical and physical changes, transforming sediments into rock. In areas where early cementation had not destroyed primary porosity, compaction caused considerable reduction in thickness. Stylolitization, a process where pressure dissolves minerals at grain boundaries, created distinctive seams and reduced porosity further. Dolomitization, although not extensive, altered parts of the reef system. This is a process by which limestone is transformed into dolomite, 
through the replacement of calcium with magnesium in the mineral structure, typically by magnesium-rich fluids. This process replaced the original limestone with dolomite in certain areas, especially in the back reef and platform margin deposits. In some cases, this enhanced secondary permeability, creating moldic porosity that has implications for the reef's potential as a hydrocarbon reservoir. Moldic porosity is a type of porosity formed when minerals or fossils in a rock dissolve, leaving behind voids or molds of the original structures. These diagenic processes highlight the post-depositional transformations that shape the reef long after its formation. Following this, the reef was uplifted by tectonic forces. The main uplift of the Devonian reefs in the Canning Basin occurred during the late Carboniferous to early Permian 320 to 280 million years ago. This uplift was due to compressional tectonics associated with the assembly of the supercontinent Pangaea, which created faulting and folding in the Canning Basin. A second period of uplift occurred during the Cretaceous period, approximately 140 to 100 million years ago, when renewed tectonic activity along fault zones caused further elevation and exposure. This period of uplift is associated with rifting and tectonic adjustments as Australia began to separate from Gondwana. And thus, today, the remnants of the Devonian Reef are etched into the landscape as rugged limestone ranges. These formations, shaped by millions of years of erosion and glaciation, offer a glimpse into the reef's ancient topography. During the Carboniferous Ice Age, glaciers scoured the reef, creating cast features such as caves, sinkholes and sharp ridges. Subglacial meltwater dissolved the limestone, forming subterranean corridors and lakes. In the last 50 million years, weathering and erosion have further transformed the landscape. The Devonian Great Barrier Reef is recognised as a site of national and international geoheritage significance. Protected as geoheritage reserves, these locations are valued for their scientific and educational importance. They provide researchers with a unique opportunity to study ancient reef ecosystems, their responses to environmental changes, and their parallels with modern reefs. Preserving these sites is essential for understanding the history of Earth's biosphere and for drawing lessons about the fragility of reef ecosystems in the face of environmental stress. And so, this is the story of the Devonian Great Barrier Reef. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and a big thank you to Steve Watts for bringing this to my attention. And as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.